Good morning, everyone. Well, welcome to St Matthew's on this beautiful morning. Our first hymn is Christ is Made the Sure Foundation. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Today we celebrate uh, St Matthew's Day and as you look at the front of your order of service you will see St Matthew's at various parts of its life. 
I don't know who was here for the, uh, for the great fire of Albury. Was anyone, was anyone here around then? Do anyone remember that? Uh, and to, uh, so we see this uh, picture here, but also we think about St Matthew's as it is today. I think we can see that uh, this is a great place of change. And also it thrills me to say that uh, in the old days at St Matthew's, uh, there was uh, never a thought uh, that anyone but a man might be up in the sanctuary apart from having a vacuum cleaner or a duster. Uh, and as you look at the, uh, uh, the sanctuary today, we see a world which is changing for the better. And it's my great delight today for us to uh, celebrate St Matthew's Day as we're thinking about the future, not just the past. And uh, so we're going to be lighting later on our candles in remembrance of all the members of our St Matthew's family who have been part of this tremendous community um, over the past years. Uh, but also thinking about the present and the future. It's also a great pleasure to have Steve Bowen, who is our Deputy Mayor, and uh, who arrived on, in St Matthew's colours in his Harley Davidson. <laughs> <laughs> Always understated, and it's lovely to have you. Why don't we give a big <laughs> round of applause? Thank you very much for, for joining us. Uh, and so, Today, we also give thanks for uh, those in the past, the present, um, and the future. And today, having as our president and our celebrant, uh, we have the Reverend Catherine Dawson, who is also in the heart of ministry to, to, um, to Albury in our region as the par head of pastoral care and chaplain to Albury Wodonga Health through our hospital. And so it's wonderful to have you here rather than on the hospital bed. Terrific. Um, and also very special to have Reverend Cathy Carden, um, who is also um, the chaplain to Trinity no, Cathedral College, Wagaratta. Oh, I'll get it right eventually. I'm only a man. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, again, part of our congregation um, ordained a deacon, and it's again a wonderful ministry, as well as being a mother and grandmother and a wife to Mark Carden, who is our, one of our church wardens. So um, thank you very much. Thank you. Why don't we give them a big round of applause as they begin. Thank you. We meet in the name of God the Creator, living word and life-giving spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord is here. Is spirit is us. Us. On this celebration of St Matthew's Day, as on every Sunday, our service is heralded by the ringing of the bells. We give thanks for the message of God's love ringing out across our community and for those who perform this ministry, often unseen but not unheard. We pray for those who exercise this ministry with both skill and faithfulness. Grant, O oh Lord, that those who are, who are appointed to ring bells in this house of prayer may do it worthily and to your glory and that those who are called by the ringing of these bells to worship you may enter with thanksgiving and with praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. We bring our daily lives and the life of the world to share in the life and hope that God offers. We acknowledge the first people of this land and all who call Australia home. We give thanks for God's loving care for families across the world and ask God's special blessing and protection for all those who are in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share the greeting of peace with a wave or an elbow. <laughs> And we continue. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we come before God, let us pray for ourselves and our world in all its need. God, our Creator, you have made us one family on earth, but many find themselves separated instead of connected. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, our Redeemer, we share your forgiveness, but our world is sharing fear and anxiety, especially remembering the people of Ukraine. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Living Spirit of God, your mercies rise new every morning. Help us to share the light of hope in these challenging times. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May God forgive us, Christ renew us, and the Spirit enable us to live in love. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom stands our eternal life and whose service is perfect freedom, defend your children against all assaults of their enemies and establish your kingdom of peace justice and love. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, called Matthew, from the selfish pursuit of gain, to become an apostle and evangelist, so free us from all greed and love of riches that we may follow in the steps of our Lord Jesus Christ in the way of self-giving love who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Would you please be seated? A very good morning. Welcome along. I remember being at uh, 
the Mercy Hospital while our son was born and watching as uh, St Matthew's was on fire from on top of the hill. And uh, we gave our wedding photos uh, of the back of the church to uh, show some of the, uh, the windows that they could hopefully uh, remake uh, in its honour again. So it's a pleasure to be here today. A reading from the book of Proverbs, chapter 3. Do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and abundant welfare they will give you. Do not let loyalty and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart. So you will find favour and good repute in the sight of God and of people. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Thank you. A reading from the letter to the Ephesians. I therefore beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. For each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gifts. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, 
until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Jesus calls us from the worship of the vain world gift golden store for each idol that would keep us saying, Christian, love me more. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory be to you, 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 O Lord. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth and he said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. As he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when Jesus heard this, he said, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. For the gospel, the good news of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, thank you very much, Father Peter, for the warm invitation to come and speak today on your Patronal Festival. While some say it's hard coming back to present in your own hometown, I don't feel that this morning. I've got a real sense of joy in being here and I feel especially privileged to be preaching from this particular pulpit with its links to Westminster Abbey so soon after our late Majesty Queen Elizabeth's funeral. What an extraordinary few weeks it has been that I know I'll be reflecting on for some time to come. But today is about Matthew and what is it that we know about him? He was a tax collector. And it's interesting that we even know that, because out of Jesus' 12 disciples, we only definitively know four of their occupations. Peter, James and John were fishermen, and perhaps a couple of others. But then we have Matthew, the tax, collectible, tax collector. So it is noteworthy, but not in a good way. Tax collectors or publicans were despised because they took on a job which probably only Jews who were unable to find other employment were prepared to do the collecting of taxes for a hated, oppressive foreign power, further receiving censure by adding additional charges to increase their own income. 
They were therefore considered by the scribes and Pharisees to be sinners of the highest degree, because by taking this job on, tax collectors were often not only dishonest, but either due to their workload, they would not or could not observe the intricacies of the Jewish law as elaborated by the traditions of the scribes. Yet Jesus sees the situation differently. By asking Matthew to follow him, Jesus ignores all social pressure and he invites Matthew into his inner circle. The Pharisees grumble. It is their view that sinners must be shunned. The groundbreaking approach of Jesus to this outsider is represented in his reply to the criticism of the Pharisees we heard in the Gospel. Those who are well have no need for a physician. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. Funnily, perhaps even a little sarcastically, Jesus suggests that they go and read their Bible again. Go and learn what this means, he says from Hosea. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. I think Jesus' calling of Matthew is perhaps one of the greatest examples of God's kingdom being for everyone. For Jesus, mercy trumps law. What do we know about the results of Jesus' calling Matthew? What examples of ministry can we find that Matthew continued on with? Well, he was probably one of the most educated of Jesus' apostles, and he would have brought many administrative and financial management skills to support Jesus' ministry. His writings, of course, were the basis for the Gospel of Matthew. As someone who was a social outsider, who was marginalised and ridiculed, his writing and actions demonstrated a particular understanding, empathy and ministry for people, particularly Jews, in a similar position. He focused on Jews who converted to Christianity, which would have been a major life-changing decision with ramifications in their own family and social standing. In some ways I see Matthew as two sides of the same coin. Someone who was maligned and a social outcast who then accepted the calling of Jesus and supported Jesus' ministry and ministered to the outcast, misunderstood and socially undesirable. So what does that mean for us sitting here today in St Matthew's? St Matthew's Aubrey motto is well known. All are invited, all are welcome. And now that I know more about Matthew, this could not be more apt. Perhaps as we consider this feast day, we should pause and reflect. In some ways, we all share Matthew's experience. We've all been called, perhaps not from a position of being outcast or downtrodden, but we recognise the love and acceptance of Jesus. And just like Matthew, we all have our own set of skills that we can use to minister to others. In our reading from Paul's letter to the people in Ephesus, we are told that each of us has been given gifts to use and we are encouraged to do so with humility, gentleness, patience, love and in unity. And how long do we keep doing this? In case any of you are thinking that you've done your bit or you're getting too old to do too much, in the passage that Steve read for us from Proverbs, we're encouraged to keep going. Do not forget my teaching. But let your heart keep my commandments for the length of days and years of life and abundant welfare they will give you. And of course, there's no greater example of this being lived out than in Queen Elizabeth herself. So as we're called to build up and support the body of Christ, where all are invited, all are welcome, who are we welcoming? The outsiders? the marginalised, the ignored? Who can we be reaching out to? The forgotten, the uncared for, the lonely, those living on their own, those in nursing homes, the sick? And no one is too old or too young 
to be part of this. On Friday, students from Trinity Anglican College came to St Matthew's and they brought socks. There's a whole basket of them out there. Why socks, you might ask? They wanted to symbolise the importance of walking in the shoes of other people, young and old, the homeless, those with mental health problems, those experiencing family breakdown, refugees, thinking, what is it like for them? Walking alongside them, inviting and welcoming them into our community and caring for them. So we can all use our gifts, whether that be praying, cooking, visiting, listening or sharing a meal. It's important that each one of us knows what our gifts are. Also on a day like today, we can remember the people who have done this at St Matthew's for the past 160 years. On this St Matthew's Day, who are we acknowledging? Who are we grateful for? During the week, I assisted at a funeral in Rutherglen for Brian Jasper. Brian had been a stalwart of St Stephen's Rutherglen for 61 years, doing every job imaginable. Treasurer, secretary, organising their main fundraising debutante ball for 50 years. What was really special and important was that even though he and his wife Jeanette had lived in Melbourne for the past 15 years, the last six of which Brian had been in a nursing home increasingly impacted by dementia, Brian was still greatly honoured and remembered and I thought that was really valuable. It reminded me of my auntie and godmother who until churches closed with COVID at 96 years old was still leading the prayers at St Anne's Ride in Sydney where she'd been baptised in 1924. By the time churches reopened, Auntie Joan had moved into a nursing home. However, the minister organised for her to get to St Anne's for one final week. He interviewed her, and fortunately it was recorded, about her many years leading Sunday school, GFS, doing the prayers. And it was so beautiful to have her recognised in this way. And I know it's something Father Peter's been interested in doing for a long time, is getting stories from our people who've been part of our ministry and parish so that they are remembered well into the future. Anne Joan will be 99 in December, still doing well. But when she does go to be with our Lord, we have that beautiful recording of her interview. And shortly we're going to have an opportunity to reflect on people who have been the stalwarts of St Matthew's, who have gone before us, or perhaps are in their twilight years in a nursing home. But they have invited and welcomed others. Perhaps they invited and welcomed you, brought you into the St Matthew's parish family, lighting the way for us, but also perhaps inviting us to share in their ministry leaving us room for us to shine our light. I know that I personally feel incredibly grateful and blessed for the 20 years or so that Mark and I and the family have been involved at St Matthew's and all it has brought to our lives. May we all, like Matthew, say yes to Jesus and as Paul exhorted the people of Ephesus, lead a wor life worthy of the calling to which you have been called with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Amen. While the choir sings, there will be an opportunity to light a candle for our loved ones and for all who have been part of our St Matthew's family, or for others unable to share with us today. And the choir will gently inspire us.
I hate putting people on the spot, but I'd like to invite Katie up because she was born in the Ukraine and so she's going to lead us in a prayer for the Ukraine. Pray for Ukraine. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for, for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear, that you would hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus, Prince of Peace. Amen. And now it's time for the prayers of the people, led by Annette Gorham. Lord, as you have called us, make us worthy of our calling, as we pray, Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. Lord God, help us to trust in you, that we may hope beyond hope and trust beyond trust. Let people see the faith of your church. Let us witness to your almighty power, for though our faith is small, it is in a great God. Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. Lord, heal the wounds of our world. We pray for all who suffer from hunger, for the outcasts of our society. We pray for those communities devastated by storms, earthquakes or war. Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. Lord, enter our homes and bring healing and peace to any divisions, that we may be one in you. Show us the way that leads to life. Teach us to forgive and to accept forgiveness. Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. We give thanks for the work of doctors and nurses. We pray for all hospitals and places of healing for bringers of peace. We pray for those who have borne long with sickness, for which there may seem no cure. Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. We ask that our friends and loved ones who are ill may know your love and protection. We give thanks for those who are at rest in you, who have found new peace and life. Rest eternal, grant to them, O Lord, and let light and perpetual shine on them. them. Lord of all life, through the power of your Spirit, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and ju justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the friendship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. For you are the hope of the nations, the builder of the city that is yet to come. Your love made visible in Christ Jesus brings home the lost, restores the sinner, and gives dignity to the despised. Therefore, with all of your creation, we glorify your name for ever praising you and singing. the body and blood of your dear son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took a cup of wine. Again he praised you and gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Lord of all life, through the power of your spirit, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the friendship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. justice and forgiveness as Jesus taught his friends. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This bread is broken in many pieces, but together we share God's love. For we all share in the one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. God's love shines for all his people. God welcomes all her children. All are invited, all are welcome. Come.
We say together the peace prayer attributed to St Francis of Assisi. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that I may not so much seek to be to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it's in giving that we receive, and it's in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it's in dying we are born to eternal life. Amen. Loving God, show us the way, so we might see you more clearly, love you more dearly, follow you more nearly, day by day. You send us in the world you love. Give us the grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your spirit. Amen. Robin is now going to give us the notices. I would like to uh, ask us all to express thanks to Catherine Dawson and Kathy Carden in taking this service this morning. It's been absolutely wonderful. Thank you very much. <laughs> Just to remind people about the uh, Chamber Music Festival, there are a few seats still available and you need to book online as soon as possible. It's going to be a wonderful event and it's only five weeks away. The other important thing is that next week we lose an hour's sleep. So we're going to be here one hour earlier than today. So remember we uh, spring forward into daylight saving and then we go backwards out of daylight saving. We catch up at the end. But we will be here an, early, an hour earlier next week. The, there will be departing offertory bags and the tap and go machine. Um, the other important thing is that we had a wonderful service here last Sunday. This church was packed. We have our regulars here today, which is great. But I wanted to also thank Father Peter, Father Matthew, and uh, Father Malcolm, and the choir for their wonderful music and the service of last week. Mm. It was just magnificent. <laughs> I forgot to mention a special welcome to anyone here today who is new to St Matthews. It's been a wonderful service. Thank you. So we'll now join together and sing our final hymn, Now Thank We All Our God.
for the uh, blessing. Um, just allow me also to say that uh, this, the work of St. Matthews uh, is more than just uh, the building and uh, the wonderful services that we have and uh, our outreach to the community. Sometimes you don't hear about uh, things that, that happen and the good results that we have. Yesterday I had a call from a young man that we helped into drug rehabilitation uh, eight months ago and I really hadn't any idea what had happened to him. I knew that we'd helped him into a certain place. We'd, we'd um, put him up for a few nights uh, here. Uh, we'd helped him into a rehabilitation. He rang yesterday to say how well he's doing. And he said that uh, sometimes you almost give up on yourself, but he said when others don't give up on you, it's amazing what can happen. So I'd really like to thank everyone who's been helping with St Matthew's uh, crisis care and emergency care throughout the years because sometimes we have the most wonderful results and it makes the world of difference to young people and their future. So thank you very much indeed for everyone who helps in that way. And one of the things that helps is our op shop and we're very short on helpers at the moment, so some days we're unable to open. So I wonder if you might think about joining a wonderful team of volunteers. Um, and it's uh, not a life sentence, uh, but uh, you might give it, just put your toe in the water and see how you go. And if you don't like it, you might just walk away with something uh, from the op shop that you do like. Uh, but you might end up with a lifetime of help as well. So thank you very much. And also, last week we did plant some uh, Queen Elizabeth roses um, in memory of Her Majesty. Uh, and also um, Daphne um, and Rosemary in memory of those loved ones that we have in being part of St Matthews, which is exactly why we're here today. We're standing upon their shoulders, aren't we? Imagine the people here for the last 160 years um, through fire, flood, um, through, through no money and some money. <laughs> so uh, again, thank you to each one of you for doing that. And our garden at the front is a sign of welcome uh, to all sorts of people in Aubrey. And it's wonderful as you see things flower, you remember the people who have made life more beautiful for each one of us. So if you're able to give a donation towards uh, our garden, um, it's one, something we do for ourselves, uh, for our loved ones, but also for strangers as well, to give them a sanctuary um, in a life of difficulty. So thank you so much. And again, thank you to our wonderful sanctuary, um, our sanctuary team, and also to know that our altar is the safest altar in the diocese because we have um, the hospital chapel in the middle, um, a couple of nurses on either side. So, uh, and uh, we're home and hosed, aren't we? <laughs> so why don't we give them a big round of applause and for our sanctuary team and all those people that keep St Matthews going together. Thank you so much. We open our hearts to receive God's blessing. The Lord hold you in the palm of his hand and give you life which is eternal and the blessing of God the Father, the grace of God the Son and the friendship of God the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us and those for whom we love and for those for whom we pray today and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace as we continue to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
trusting God, we pray for our new King. Bless his reign and the life of our nation. Help us to work together so that truth and justice, harmony and fairness flourish among us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.